2011 has been a bonza year for our beloved Aussie soaps. The residents of Ramsey Street have survived fire, seen through a phantom pregnancy and saluted a dear old friend. Whilst the citizens of Summer Bay have dealt with a murder, a missing baby and a mischievous gang of boys. Whoa. Every night this week we're celebrating the year's most memorable moments from award-winning Home and Away and Neighbours as voted for by you last month on the Channel 5 website. We'll get behind the stories with exclusive interviews from the cast of both soaps and we'll remember those scenes that had millions of us on the edge of our seats every night of the week. We're starting off at number 20 on Ramsey Street with Toady and his first day at work from hell. Toady's first day at the law firm. It's the beginning of a new era for, for the whole Mitchell, Rebecca, Jones family. Sonia wants to have a nursery and in order to have this nursery we need to get some more money. And How can we suddenly afford a loan? You are looking at Simmons and Colbert's newest solicitor. So he's got these grandioso ideas about, you know, how good it's all going to be. And Sonia is just so grateful because she, I mean, through this, all of her dreams are coming true. Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe this is happening. Hey, hey. come on. We should be laughing, oh. not crying. <laughs> this is a, a huge day for Toadie because this is really one of the, you know, well, the first day of the rest of his life. He's let go of you know, his past so that he and his family can move into a new future. What are you doing up so early? Oh, I came to give you this. You left it in my room last night. Oh, thank you, mate. All right, well, I've got to go. Mwah. I'm proud of you. <laughs> See you later. Bye. <laughs> what did you do to his phone? Nothing. Toady is he's an easy target when his guard's down, but when it's not, it's hard to get him, so at any opportunity. And seeing as it's first day, he's like, excellent. He needs a stress-free day. You know what the best cure for stress is? Comedy. Callum and Sonia just think the absolute world of Toadie, that their point of view is, what could possibly go wrong? You're so wonderful. Even if you do something that's a little bit strange or funny, they'll love you, because we do. And you're from Erinsborough and everything's great here. But unfortunately, things get off to a pretty bad start. On his first day to work, he ends up being late because of just all the traffic. Yeah, could I leave a message for Peter Noonan, please? Could you let him know that I'm going to be running a few minutes late for that meeting? OK, thank you. Bye. Are you joking me? This is not the ideal start for Toadie. It's sort of that thing that when one bad thing happens, another happens, then another happens, then another happens. Now, we're also putting on two new clerks to help with the extra... Hi, uh, so sorry I'm late, everybody. Uh, Jared, good of you to join us. Yeah, so, so sorry I'm late. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone, this is Jared Rebecca. Yeah, you know, the traffic was a nightmare, you know. I got up crazy early just to beat it all, and I think I got every red light and road work from here to Erinsborough. <laughs> and then the car park was full, and then I got the dodgy ticket machine, and I didn't have any change. And to top it all off, I got a fine for calling the office. <clears throat> but luckily, I've got a room full of lawyers who are on my side. The negative energy just keeps flowing and flowing and flowing. Yeah, I know. It's early. I... Can I just sit down? I think that's best. Right. Well, with the new law firm came a new set. And this is actually where the producers all get together and storyline everything. So it's a, it's a big, uh, big table with all these very nice ergonomic chairs. Everything moves on them, including the arms. You can have one going up and one going down. And I thought this was hilarious. So as soon as I first saw these chairs, I was like, oh, I have to do something with these. This is what I should be doing all the time. This is great. As I was... <coughs> Nothing's going on here. Anyway, as I was saying, I've hired an additional two clerks to help with the extra workload, and... He's been late, now he's interrupting it, and he's interrupting it with a mooing cow. So, sorry, yep, yeah, it is me, yeah. Uh, my son must have changed my ringtone. He thinks he's funny. Uh, it's, it's very funny, I thought. Can I continue? Please. Move on. After the meeting, I think you and I should have a word. 
Yeah. I don't know anyone who hasn't had a day like that. It really has kind of gone from what was the ideal day to possibly one of the worst days. I have days like that getting to the studio. You get up and then you get stuck in the traffic. You think things are going to go so brilliantly and then nothing goes right. Five minutes late and you're ringing the AD. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm five minutes late. And then you get in. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. You try jeans on and everything goes tighter and you're just like, oh, this is just a bad day. So I think people can really relate to what's happened with Toadie uh, and, uh, and really kind of feel a bit sorry for him as well as laugh at him at the same time. Just like we laugh at your shirt, Toady. At 19, we're at Summer Bay to see Romeo take on Harvey, the control of the seas. So Romeo's got this romantic cruise business going. You know, take clients to romantic destinations and they have like a picnic on the back of his boat or, you know, take them to a beach. He borrowed some really nice cutlery and crockery and all that sort of stuff and then he, he goes to um, show Alf and brings Alf to the boat and it's been trashed. Oh no. What the flaming hell? And all the, the, the expensive cutlery's been stolen. Indy sort of is supportively saying, okay, well we can start again, don't worry, and <laughs> being a good little wifelet. So unfair, I mean, who would do this? Enter Harvey, another charter boat operator. Mate, I've been running the best charters around here for 15 years. The place is not big enough for the two of us. I'll, I'll divide up the territory evenly so we don't step on each other's toes, OK? And so Romeo just Im immediately, you know, goes, well, this is obvious. This guy is in competition with me. Of course he's the one who trashed the boat. What's a big idea? With what? Sending the coppers over to question me. I was just reporting a crime. Mate, I did not trash your boat. You don't have any proof to say that I did. Well, I guess that's where we disagree. I was trying to be nice about this, so we both had a fair go, but you bring the cops into this, it changes everything. The gloves are off now, mate. Romeo finds out that it w wasn't, in fact, Harvey uh, that trashed the boat. I think I might have some stuff that belonged to you. <laughs> they are the missing items from the Black Slide, aren't they? The cutlery yes, is found at the drop-in centre that the Reverend runs. The bottom line was, it wasn't Harvey. Then Harvey goes and finds out that the mooring that Alf has is actually a handshake deal and he doesn't have an, you know, a proper permit, and so he, he puts in a complaint to council. Back 40 years ago, a nod and a wink was good enough, a handshake. Yeah, where you go, mate? You use the mooring and it's yours for life. So I take it the council meeting didn't go too well? $58,000. What did you say to them? I told them to stick their non-existent mooring up their non-existent... Um, as uh, Scylla would say, a lot of, lot of money. So Romeo is in line to take uh, a, a resort developer out to a resort site, but it's the day of the storm. I'm sorry, mate, but it's not happening. Not on the Blacksland, and not today. Harvey decides to take his boat out and take these investors across the bay to the new resort to have a look and back. Not only is it unsafe, and he's risking everyone's, you know, safety, but Harvey's going to get the resort contract. Mayday, mayday, mayday. We're taking on water. We need to abandon the vessel. Mayday, mayday, mayday. So, storm comes up. Um, Harvey's boat sinks. Not a real good decision, Harvey. There! At least they made it to land, thank God. So Romeo saves Harvey's life. Listen to me, Harvey. We have to get out of here, all right? I lost my boat. It's sack. We'll manage to get back in this car and get out of here. These scenes were all shot for real in the middle of winter. That was a full night shoot from, from about 5 p.m. till about 5 a.m. in the morning. We drove out to a location um, where we had three or four huge rain machines. And I was wet the entire night. You could barely hear yourself think. With the wind machines, the rain machines, you couldn't see out of the place. It was exhilarating. I loved it. I loved every second of it. In between takes, we had this little tent that had that was full of heaters and things and hot water bottles and whatever. But you, know, you put those on if you wanted to. Um, my take on that was, why put those bloody things on? We're going to be out in it again in a minute and get ringing wet and cold all over again. Harvey made the bad decision and his boat sank, so he doesn't have a boat. Alf has no boat. No, Alf has a boat, but no mooring. Do they get together? Should they get together? And then they end up getting to business together. 
Should they get together? Different story. Of course it's not a good idea. You know, it's nothing but problems from the get-go. Uh, just so you know, I've got to leave early tonight. You're going to have to clean up on your own. Are you serious? It's not that big a deal. We're supposed to be working as a team. Yeah, and teams uh, work together. They help each other out. I'm sorry. Sorry. Basically, it's just a, it's a power struggle. Will they both pull equal weight? Will Harvey think that he's the boss because he's always run his own business? No, look, mate, dream on. I mean, dreams are free. <laughs> they don't pay the bills, though. Thanks. In order to find out if it really is a good idea, I can't tell you that. You're going to have to keep watching. Cheers, Alf, you flaming galah. Well, can you guess what stories are coming up next in part two? Here's a few clues. It's just like being at the zoo. She feels that she had to stick to her morals. So I've got to be careful here because we are uh, G-rated. <laughs>